we will read today from Prima Bhakti Chandrika one very nice verse. In the later part, it's called uh, The female companions drink their nectarian forms and pastimes with their eyes and sing their glories, absorbed in bliss. This is a very nice verse. It's verse 90 from Prima Bhakti Chandrika. <laughs> Their female companions drink their nectarian forms and pastimes with their eyes and sing their glories absorbed in bliss. Nicely serve Kishora, Kishori who are unknown to the Vedic rules and who sit on a jeweled platform. The bliss of the Sakis. After describing the dual sweetness of Shishi Radha Mohan's love and beauty, Shilatako Mahashai now describes the bliss and the rasa the Sakis relish from the sweetness of the divine couple. On a jeweled bedstead in the Nikunja Mandira of enchanting Sri Vrindavan, Kishora, Kishori, Sri Radha Mohan are dripping with Prema Rasa, filled with the natural beauty of elegance. Sakis surround them in all four directions. Each one of them is a matchless picture of Prema Rasa, of beauty, of sweetness, of laughter and humor. When the oceans of Rasa and Prema spill over, it is as if they play all over the horizons. So that's a very interesting description of how Radha Mohan are dancing and singing and are playing or sitting on a jeweled platform. That is a platform which is made out of itself of Satchit Ananda. All Vrindavan in the spiritual world is full of consciousness and full of being. Nothing in Vrindavan is matter. It's all spiritual existence and spiritual bliss. And here Srila Vishwana Chakravati Pad's tika is that the Sakis, and Sakis in this case means a general address of friends. Because as we see in the ongoing purport, also the mandaris are expressed in their feelings. First of all, I like how, how much when they are together, that all the maidservants and all the sakis, they are also explained as an ocean uh, of Rasa and Prema, because Radha and Mohan are the ocean of Rasa and Prema, of course, but the ocean spills over. It's like they are completely absorbed in each other and they are completely uh, enchanted by each other. And that Prema, that is also spilling over, it's multiplied through the Sakis and through the Mandaris means the activities of Radha Mohan, they are expressed also through the service of the Sakis and the Mandaris when they are together. So first of all, it is explained how the female companions drink 
the nectarian forms and pastimes and sing their glories. They at the same time, they are there together on the Nikunja platform. And they are also communicating with each other. They are singing to Radha Mohan, and Radha Mohan again is overwhelmed and is overflowing with their own prema ras. And that prema ras is also touching all the female companions. And here it is says that each of them is a matchless picture of prema ras, beauty, sweetness, laughter, and humor. So we can feel that all these female companions are in a way also non-different from Radha Mohan's expression of their love. And all these female companions, they have different, different services in this expression of their own love. And it is interesting that uh, Srila Vishwana Chakravati part, he says that this oceans of rasa and prema are spilling over. You know, it's like when you have a water flow, like a waterfall, and then it goes on and on and on and on. It will overflow any container. If you put a bowl, if you put a lake, if you put an ocean, when the rasa and the prema are meeting, when Radha and Mohan are meeting, it is an explosion of emotions. And that will naturally make all other beings who are there, and these are all the sakis, the female companions in generally expressed, they are also overflowing, they are also... They're singing and they're dancing and all the interactions, all the services will be completely in the same mood of this feeling of, of overflowing love. The bee-like eyes of the Sakis Drink the wonderful luster, and luster means emanation or aura, of honey rasa that drips from the blue and golden lotus of Sri Radha Mohan's sweetness and beauty. With deep attachment. So here we can see that the eyes of the sakis are compared to bees. Bees are also drinking the honey. And the bees, they are very crazy for the, from the honey. So these are, we could say also, explanation of Samasneya sakis, who are also loving Radha and Mohan equally. And with sweet voices, the sakis sing the honey-sweet erotic pastimes of the divine couple. They are there, they are witnessing it, and they are also expanding it by their singing and by their expressing of how much love is coming and how much love is flowing between Radha and Mohan. In this way, the Sakis are immersed in paramount bliss as they swim in the Rasa ocean of the Yugala's forms, attributes, and pastimes. This is the explanation of how the Sakis feel. And now, continuation of how the Mandaris feel, and what is the difference in their feelings? The Sakis are immersed in paramount bliss and they swim in the Rasa ocean of the Yugala's forms, attributes, and pastimes. 
Radha's maidservants are also a kind of sakis. They also constantly swim in the inexhaustible rasa waterfall of Yugala's witness. And they also engage in the devotional service of the Yugala and their sakis. So here we hear that the Radha's maidservants, they also exp exp uh, experience this rasa waterfall of sweetness that is gushing from Radha Mohan's meeting. And they also serve the sakis. That is in inter interesting also. They are ex engaged in the devotional service of Yugala and their sakis. So we know that Gurudev, sometimes he also says, what can I do? I'm just a maidservant and I have the elder sakis are above me. So the dasis of Shimate Radhika, they also serve Lalita, Vishaka, Vishaka Chitra, Champakalata. What does it mean they serve? means whenever they get any order from them, they will also do it. Get the paraphernalia now. They are very much thirsty. Make a fresh uh, herbal drink or something like that. Pick some flowers or whatever the, the, the order will be. Um, the maidservants will follow any order they get also from the elderly sakis. They do not forget their service due to being absorbed in relishing their sweetness. They are engaged in service and at the same time immersed in the sweet rasa of the Sri Yugala. This makes them more special than the sakis. So they have the same feelings that they can feel of Radha and Mohan and their feelings, but they never carried away by these feelings that they are not able to do their service. They are first service oriented. Their service is their rasa. And that is the difference because the sakis maybe they are doing other kinds of services according to the situations because we know we are all servants of Radha and Mohan in the spiritual world. Even the clouds, even the trees, even the cows and whole Vrindavan is serving the Paraki above of Radha Mohan. All arrangements of the inhabitants and the trees and the plants and the houses of Vrindavan, all what is happening is because of the service to the divine couple. And in the end, it is Srimati Radhika's service to her Mohan because she is the personification of love and service and praying. Now comes one nice verse of Naratom Das Thakur Pratana, or a song, where he's speaking about his own meditation. I will make a bed of red lotus petals and seat Kishora and Kishori on that. Their enchanting lotus-like faces are covered with their curly locks. Sham resembles an emerald and Gauri is golden. Radha is gold. Gauri means the golden one, the female form of go. Ranga is Gaurangi, or the short version of that is Gauri, the golden one. 
Pranashwari, when will I get your merciful glance? When will I, on your order, bring different kinds of flowers and hear your sweet voice? Here we see that the maidservants, they are firstly focused on Shimati Radhika's mercy. They serve Mohan because she is serving him. When will I get your merciful glance? When will I bring the different flowers and hear your sweet voice? I will decorate you with mask tilak and a stripe of sendura. Mask tilak is that very nice yantra that Shemati Radhika has on her forehead. And that sindura is this red mark. It's also a mark of her love for Mohan. I will anoint you with fragrant sandalwood pulp and I will string a garland of malati flowers that will make the bumblebees run. And here we hear also in the next verse how Naratam Dastako in his Svarupa Vesh also is confirming that he is serving Shimate Lalita. When will Lalita give me a fan with which I can softly fan them, drying up the sweat drops from their bodies? I will see all of this in topmost ecstasy. Naratam Das hopes that he can drink the sweet beverage, the sweet drink of service to their lotus feet. But alas, I see no signs that such a blessed day is going to come when I can see these two with my own eyes. In this prayerful song, we can clearly hear how this witness of the divine pair is relished by the mandaris while they are rendering service. So we can see that the mandaris, the small sakis, they are all about service and they are absorbed in this Seva Ras. Their devotion to Shemati Radhika is such that they always observe any movement of her eyes, any expression of her face, and any sign that could come from her bodily movements so that they are always ready to assist in any way that Shemati Radhika would need at this special moment, at any moment. And that is their main concern. And when Lalita will give the Manjuri a fan, then she will fan. The Yugala Bhajan of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas consists of the allegiance or the following of these maidservants of Radha. Defining the status of Radha's maidservants, Srimad Prabodhananda Saraswati has written, And that is a quote from the Vrindavan Mahima, the great glories of Vrindavan, written by Prabodhananda Saraswati Thakur. Oh friend, follow the maidservants of Sri Radhika, whose bodies are like clusters of foam emanating 
from the transcendental ocean of sweet most love that is her lotus feet, who are young girls filled with all cleverness, whose bodies are the vessels of astonishment, shining with the deep radiance of youthfulness and decorated with divine garments and ornaments. Remember Radha's maidservants who are of youthful age and who have a radiant golden complexion, whose forms are captivating, whose waists are very beautiful and slender, whose buttocks and breasts are vast, whose noses are decorated with dangling nose pearls made of the best gold-studded gems and who have the best braids suspending from the heads and who wear beautiful silken dresses. Remember the exclusively loving golden complexioned maidservants of Sri Radhika, whose most captivating vine like arms are decorated with armlets and bangles, thus rendering them very beautiful, whose waist belts, ankle belts, and jeweled earrings jingle, thus rendering them very tempting, who have very beautiful braids, and the shining of whose necklaces that dangle on their butt-like breasts gives them a beautiful luster. So these two verses of the Vrindavan Mahima are very nice meditations of how beautiful the maidservants are, of how beautiful our Swarup will be and is. And it's a good uh, occupation for the mind to, to remember. Because even if I chant or if I meditate in these forms, they do not manifest in my inner eyes yet. Because maybe my mind is too flickering and my consciousness is too blurry. Whatever the my state of, of bhajan is, it doesn't matter, but these meditations of those maidservants who are already realized in that, they help me to remember. How beautiful, how clever, how astonishing and shining how youthful and how beautiful decorated with divine garments and ornaments. And we know that these divine garments and ornaments, they are all prashadi. They all have been given to them by Shimati Radhika. And we also know that these ornaments, they are also themselves made of feelings. These are ornaments that express a, diff, a you know a special kind of love, a, a kind of uh, expression of love. These ornaments are in themselves such it ananda. They are conscious, and they are fully um, 
transcendental. And Srila Naratam Dastaku is saying in their following or in the mood of Radha's maidservants, nicely serve Kishora and Kishori, who are incomprehensible by following the Vedic rules and who are sitting on a jeweled throne. Why are they incomprehensible by following the Vedic rules? It is because the rules are always the rules. But if we want to enter into the mood of Rindavan, we have to forget our rules. Remember that example when... Uh, Lakshmi herself is so attracted by Krishna because she somehow knows that my Vishnu is so beautiful, but this Krishna is more beautiful. And the Leelas in Vrindavan are very attractive. They are so playful. They are not like here in Vaikuntha, where everything is so much full of majesty and full of, you know, this reverence and awe and feelings of. Oh, how can I do it right? But in Vrindavan, it is not about right or wrong. It's all about love. So when Lakshmi Devi, she tries to enter Vrindavan, then Krishna says that you have to give up your mood of a, of a goddess, of the majesty of Vaikuntha. Can you pick up some cow duck and make a cow patty? And she was not able to give up her majestic feelings. So she, she, could not, she could not cross her rules. Her rule is, I am the goddess of fortune. I am the Lakshmi. I am the, you know, I'm always on the chest of my Lord Vishnu. And I cannot be any cowherd girl, girl that is playing with the cows and with the cow dung, making patties for cooking the dishes or for making the floors beautiful. Mix the cow dung with the sand of Rindavan, with that golden dust and make the floor beautiful for the entrance of our house. So to do that, even Lakshmi Devi could not cross her rules. What to speak about the Vedic scriptures? Because the Vedic scriptures, they are so vast and they are so uh, complicated also. Sometimes they say yes, then sometimes they say no. You find everything in the Vedic scriptures. And then also, who can be so learned to read all of this in one lifetime? And who wants to read this in all of you know, we have, the brains are too small for the Vedic literatures, honestly. But the brains are not so important in Vrindavan. We know that Vrindavan is full of play. And the gopis, they even chastise Mohan when he cannot play a, a game of chess or dice. They say, yeah, this is not for the cowherder's brain who can only run behind the cows and saying, who, 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 cow, 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 <laughs> whatever they say. <laughs> they say so sounds for the cows and they say sounds for the birds. They can play and uh, imitate all the birds and the different, different animals' voices, they can make a cuckoo, like Mohan makes a cuckoo sometimes when he, when he tries to get uh, Shimati Radhika out of the house. <laughs> but it's far beyond the Vedic rules. 
The most confidential bhajan of Shishi Radha Mohan takes place in Braj, the abode of sweetness. Veda Vidi Agochara. Of the three sections of the Vedas, Karma Kanda, Jnana Kanda, and Upasana Kanda. Usually, the reverential compulsory worship of the personality of Godhead can be seen in the Upasana Kanda. We see here again huh? the reverential compulsory worship. So first there is karma kanda, means how to behave in a way that you will have a good karma. No, it's about the relationship that will be doing the right things so that the wrong things don't happen to make a good karma. And the jnana kanda is the approach uh, of the world in a kind of knowledgeable way, how to know, you know, the scriptures and how to be a learned person, how to be a pundit and the jnani and to know the different scriptures and to recite them in a beautiful voice and to be giving advice and to be giving, you know, do this and not do that, to be a teacher. But then there is this Upasana Kanda means how to be close to the worship of the personality of Godhead. And it's reverential. That is means that the Vedic uh, literatures, they usually hint the soul to go to Vishnu, to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And we can see this also mainly in Srimad Bhagavatam. Many, many stories there about Vishnu. For example, uh, Ajamil. Ajamil was a Brahmana who was doing a lot of beautiful things in the beginning of his life. And later he did, did many not so beautiful things. But in the end of his life, he was chanting the name of his last son, whose name was Narayan. So he was calling him. He was not even remembering Vishnu, but because he gave his son the name of Narayan, the Vishnu Dutas came at the end of his life. So, you know, these scriptures who have only this knowledge of the Supreme Personality of Godhead will guide the living entities to do the right thing, to be a good person, and then go to Vishnu Loka, to go to Vaikuntha, the world without fear. But then that's why also Vyasadev was not happy, because he had written so many beautiful uh, stories and uh, the whole Srimad Bhagavatam with all the Dash avatars, with all the incarnations. But in the end, something was missing and come to find out it was the 10th canto, which is like in a nutshell, the Leela of Krishna in Vrindavan. So that was another aspect of the Supreme Personality of Godhead that had not been described before and that was uh, giving an, uh, you know, a hint that this is the final way of the living entity to take shelter of Vrindavan. So we can see that the Vedic literatures, when we study them or if we have heard about them, they can also be a hindrance if we want to enter the sweet pastimes of Vrindavan in such a way that we think what to do is right and what to do is wrong. Because Vrindavan rules are completely different than Vedic rules. Vrindavan rules are the rules of sweetness, the rules of love, and the rules of play 
and simplicity. And in the Vedic scriptures, it's all very complicated what you have to do before you can touch this and that and do this and that. You know, it's like it's, it's not so easy for any living entity to be entering into that realm of, of purity and perfection. And that's why it is says here that Kishora and Kishori, Radha and Mohan, cannot be attained by following the Vedic rules. Incomprehensible, not even attained, they cannot be comprehensible. That means one cannot uh, imagine, one cannot get any kind of connection to them by following the Vedic rules. Because the Vedic rules are, make, are made for the living entity to approach God. But the uh, Vrindavan is made, made for the living entities to become a servant of the sweetness personified in such a way that you also have to be divine. I remember there was another purport of Baba where he says, you have to become a god to enter into the goddess. Uh, servant means the servants of Shimati Radhika, they are characterized by this selfless love that is not considering any gain or profit. It's, it's uh, like it's a service to Shimati Radhika that is not um, calculated. Whereas mostly when we follow the Vedic rules, it's a lot about calculation. It's a lot about how can I do the right thing to get the right result. And sometimes I have noticed also in myself, I try to apply this to Manjari Bath, but it doesn't work. Because the calculative mind is not the platform of Chitta Britti. That's what I uh, what I feel in my practice. That uh, to check my own uh, thinking, I can I can do it. I can try it, but it's not. It cannot be calculated in a way. It must become natural. So the most confidential bhajan of Sri Sri Radha Mohan takes place in Vrindavan, the abode of sweetness. And in this particular Kali age, Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu's unprecedented merciful gift is the Manjari Bhav Upasana of sweet Vrindavan. So that what we have discussed before, that this Vedic rules and the Vedic scriptures, it's all very high for a, you know, for a human being to attain it. And that's why often it is said also we have to practice many lifetimes and it's very uh, demanding. But in this particular Kali Yuga, in this time where we are, are now living where we have taken birth in this body, Mahaprabhu has come. And he is she. He is not only Goranga, she is Gorangi. And when she comes together with him, and you know how good is expressing his bhajan that she is sandwiching him. She is in uh, on the one side, on the other side. She is, you know, he, he has taken her for her her luster, her golden form, and he has taken her feelings, and he is in the middle. So that is uh, such a powerful combination that Shrimati Radhika is actually coming double, and in between is Krishna. No, that is the. 
the power sandwich in this Kali Yoga. And that is a special gift that this meditation to be a small girl who is serving Sri Mata Radhika is inclusive. And it's a gift, it's a present that is given by Nityananda and Gauranga and they have been freely giving it in the marketplace of mercy as we have discussed on Sunday, as we have heard on Sunday. Now comes another verse of Chaitanya Chandamrita, it's also by Prabhudananda Saraswati. And he says that Sri Hari has descended into the phenomenal world in the form of Gora to bring the worship of relishing the pastimes of Radha's Rati Keli Nagara. Krishna, the hero of erotic pastimes. And the Prema in Madhura Ras, which is the cause of this relish, which is the ultimate purport of Srimad Bhagavat, which is the essence of Vedanta but which was only hinted at and not clearly described by Sri Shukadev Muni, the son of Yasadev, who thought it to be too intimate in his narration of the Rasa Lila. So that's very interesting that Srila Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur has written this that this Srimad Bhagavat is the essence of Vedanta. And we, as we have discussed, it has many beautiful stories about Vishnu. Mostly Vishnu. Only in the end, in the 10th canto, come the Leelas of Krishna. And even these Leelas of Krishna, they have been explained in a very general way. Why? Because Sugadev Muni, thought it to be too intimate, this narration of the Rasa Lila. And why too intimate? Because it can be misunderstood. With a human material mentality, it is very difficult to grasp how Krishna can be the lover of so many gopis. We can easily project our mental human ideas on him. And that's why we need the mercy of Shimati Radhika to really, you know, go into that subject with an innocent, childlike mind, with a pure consciousness full of love and not afraid you know, to be wrong or to do something wrong, but just eager to do service. Therefore, this confidential worship of Sri Sri Radha Mohan, who are sitting at the base of a wish-yielding tree of Rindavan and who cannot be perceived, By following the Vedic rules is the extraordinary treasure of fortune for the people of Kali. And again, he says, again, the people of Kali must serve Shishi Radha Mohan, who cannot be perceived by following the Vedic rules in full surrender to the lotus feet of Shri Gauda. So we see the key the key uh, to the to the entrance into the service of Shri Shri Radha Mohan is the mercy of Shri Gauranga, is the mercy of Shri Mati Radhika, who has come in this Kali Yuga to give this extraordinary secret of the beauty of her love and of her beloved. Oh fools, 
Seek this confidential devotion to the lotus feet of Shri Radha Mohan, which could not be discovered even by the greatly wise seers. And that's why it can also not be found in the Vedic literatures. It's an open secret. It can be only revealed or given by the mercy of Shri Gauranga and his or her devotees, her maidservants. If you have no faith in this, since it was not even attained by the great sages, let alone you, now we can think like this. No? How can I realize it when the great sages did not even, you know, come close to it? Or if you think it is too difficult to attain, then give up everything and surrender to the lotus feet of Sri Gauranga. Koranga bolite habe pulaka sharira hari hari bolite nayane babenira If you do this you will certainly become qualified for this confidential worship this is the purport suggested here. So, my dears, anybody would like to add, it would like to correct me if I did anything wrong, or if you have any inspirations. Harade, I just want to say thank you, Suniti, because nothing wrong, everything right, and <laughs> very sweet. <laughs> thank you, Sundaram, your love is so sweet. And I see in your room is also very cold. You are like in Vrindavan with a jacket yeah. and a shawl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, I lose my voice. Oh, yes, it's a winter time. <laughs> Bad weather here. <laughs> Radhe Radhe Suniti. Radhe Radhe Dayanidi, how are you? <laughs> can you hear me nice? Yes, I can okay. hear you correctly. Jai. So, um, I want to ask you, uh, after, after all this hearing about uh, Rupanuga Sadhana, uh, when we remember about rules and regulation and uh, vision stories, no? It mm, looks like uh, it's very simple, actually, to, to go to Narayan or to Vishnu. <laughs> so, uh, how is possible that, that some, uh, this is also a spiritual world without fear, no? Eternal. But is it is it possible now? Now we, we see that uh, to become manjari is need to develop real love to develop the bhav of the others manjaris of the acharya. So is necessary to eagerness is necessary. Is it possible that one uh, can go to the Vishnu Loka just by? doing the rules and regulation without understanding of what he doing or also there also is necessary some eagerness i mean you know <laughs> <laughs> i understand you want to know what is the eagerness is also for becoming a devotee of vishnu because if you want to follow you know the rules and regulations you also need to have some eagerness mm. I guess in any kind of spiritual practice, we need some motivation. 
You, you know, when when uh, spiritual life is practicing in the institutional way and all, it looks like that uh, just go and everything will uh, be automatically, no? But actually, it's not like that, actually. No, uh, I don't think so. I think the to become like a you know a Vaishnava. In any case, it is it is a challenge. We need to be purified, and we need to you know develop the good qualities of a Vaishnava. It's just that also in the in the case of Jagai and Madai, uh, why is this such a famous example? Nityananda took them. You know, as an example, because in Kali Yuga, actually, in, it is very, very difficult to, to, to have all the proper behavior. Even, you know, if one comes from, like in India, many of them come from a Brahmana family. And they still became, uh, you know, became in a habit of doing uh, very uh, bad things. No, although their parents were brahminical, means they were looking always for the right behavior, for the cleanliness, for the purity. And I think that uh, it has a reason because Nityananda he says to himself, if if Jagai and Madai who are so you know perverted in their own behavior and in their own uh, human nature. If they become liberated by the mercy of my Gora, then the whole world will see how great is the mercy of my Gauranga. So eagerness for the Vaishnava who wants to go to Vaikuntha is important. But in this Kali Yuga, even if we are very fallen, if we get the mercy of Nityananda, and let's say if we get the mercy of our Gurudev and of our Guru Vaga, even if we cannot be completely perfect or if our eagerness is maybe not enough, there is a great chance that we get the mercy anyway. That's what I feel. That is the speciality of, of Gaur Nitai's Leela. But eagerness we need in all our spiritual practices and all the time. And that, I feel, comes only by good association. Otherwise, my daily activities and my manovriti will swallow up my eagerness. <laughs> that we all know. Mm -hmm. So we have this double, I feel we have this double, uh, how do you say, net, you know? Net, when the artists are flying in the air and they can fall down. And we also can fall down in any moment. Uh, but there's a net, and that net of mercy is, is Dornitai's mercy. And that is so wonderful. And that's what also Naratam Das Thakur or the Prabhupada Saraswati say. If you have no faith in this, if you have no strength because you think it's too difficult, just give up everything and surrender to the lotus feet of Shigoranga. Why he says this? Because it's true. Because sometimes we have a greed and sometimes we have no greed, right? It goes in waves. So, but that doesn't matter because when we have full faith in Gauranga Mahaprabhu, in Nityananda, it will happen also. So we have this double net. First of all, our own endeavors, our own, you know, our own little things that we can do. And then we have the mercy of Nityananda of Gauranga and they are there to come and help us and save us and I think uh, that is such a great combination that it cannot be broken <laughs> you know I think it cannot be broken but still of course we want to be eager and uh, I try my best but I know there will be always something left that needs to be you know uh, in the in the in the case of mercy mercy case in the mercy realm but eagerness is also for the vaikuntha bhaktas for the vishnu you know vaishnava means all kinds of of bhaktas all kinds of followers i think spiritual life without greed or eagerness is not working but uh, i remember in this hidden path of devotion or uh, 
our Gurudev, Srila Narayan Maharaj, she also mentioned that when you worship Radha and Krishna in a way that is with the eagerness, but you worship them like a uh, in a uh, mood of reverence for the for the for the Goloka, you know, without a Vrindavan mood, then also that will not be enough. You can end up in Dvaraka. You can end up in another dimension of the spiritual world. That's how I understood it. So I think the grace of Nityananda, and we are very much uh, concerned with this, we are much eager for this because we are now in the line of Nityananda and Janavama is our great uh, hope to fill up all the holes, you know, in the heart, in the consciousness, in our endeavors. And um, we are very lucky that we are here in this uh, wonderful mercy net of protection of Nityananda's uh, line. I hope this is okay for the greed or the eagerness question. But I was also very much astonished how, how this uh, is uh, expressed by Prabhupada Saraswati himself that uh, it was not clearly described the prema of Madhuyaras, which is the ultimate purport of Srimad Bhagavatam. But it was not clearly, means in depth, with all the secrets, with all the little hints, with all the caves of Govardhan. It was not described. That was done only by Raghunath Goswami, how the mandaris are singing there, how Tulsi Mandari is singing there, learning the songs of Srimati Radhika and why she is teaching these songs so that she can sing them at the right times. That is all their secrets. And we are so lucky that, you know, by the mercy of, of our, our whole Guru Pamra, we are connected to this. And by the mercy of Gurudev, we can hear it. We can, you know, we can swallow it. We can, we have been blessed, you know, to hear these leelas again and then again and then again, to, to get them sink down in my consciousness and to believe and to have faith that, yes, I, I also will be kicked by Nityanam. <laughs> I also want to be kicked by Nityanam. <laughs> Thank you for sharing something, Dayanidi. I yes, always very, very like to, hear, to see you. Huh? Very wonderful. You, you are, you are also part of this net that we cannot <laughs> go down. I hope thank so. You. And thank you so much. I, I, I hope you are also part of my net. <laughs> we are catching each other, right? Our love is is making us close, and then the the net is. It's very beautiful, the net of love. We need this net of love. Sankirtan. Yes. And um, actually, I the thing is, I wanted to read a completely different verse today. But when I saw we are a small group, then I chose this verse spontaneously. But another verse I will read next week, it's about fixation in bhajan and it's also very beautiful how to be fixed in bhajan what is the secret and what are the obstacles and you know my bhajan is not always very deep it's often more you know i could do more i could feel more i aspire to experience more but i know also what is lacking i know why the net is you know, why there are big holes, because my concentration is not so strong and this and that. And these little details, they are also uh, explained by uh, Baba and by Naratam Dastako. And um, maybe next Tuesday we can discuss and hear about this because it's very helpful for the daily uh, fixing of the holes. No? Not it becomes like this, but it becomes like this and then it becomes like that. Wow, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, my dear uh, Diana. My big love also to, uh, what's her name again? Your beautiful Ananda Mai. Ah, okay, yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> 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 Adi. Adi. 
Ready, ready. Ah, Kundala Tar, Hello. <laughs> I'm very happy to see you and so I'm so thankful for your sharing because this book, Prem Bhakti Chandrika, I know that is a very good book and Gurudev also recommended me to to go deeper in this book, but alone I was not so motivated. And now I'm very happy that you do this sharing. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Gunalada. Yes. And I have another thing I liked today very much. You explained how we came to Vrindavan, to Braj. And uh, it's so sweet to hear again, again, that is playful and easy and that the rules are so much different there. And there is this simplicity which I like so much and just to hear this again what for me was today for me um, so sweet and to see you and all others thank you so much Good thank luck. you my dear Radhe, Radhe, Radhe. thank you Good luck. we meet you again and again and thank you also for your inspiration for Prema Bhakti Chandrika it yes. was Gurdiv's mercy to give this to us and to make a deep deep uh how you say this um opening, opening because yeah gorasunda says opening because this time when he was in rendavan with guri he would always read this and he became completely intoxicated by prema bhakti chandrika yes. <laughs> morning 30 we read at mornings at 2 30 he was reading with guri so you know it's it's a it's a blessing and i feel also blessed because when others are blessed, then we are also connected and we feel more blessed and we feel more confirmed in our little endeavors to, to serve. And uh, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. We are all connected and our endeavors are also connected to make the net of love very strong and very, um, how do you say, trustworthy. We can jump in the net of love. <laughs> we will not very be lost. <laughs> Very good. So you will read um, not from the beginning. You you just choose a little bit what you think, what is just coming to you. Yeah, because in the beginning I did that. I read verse by verse, but then Gurudev said, "No, no, uh, you cannot. You don't have to do it. You can go verse by verse." And now I write in my book whenever I took the verse, and then I always go from different different subjects according to. What I feel is uh, inspiring at the Thank moment. You. Very good. I'm happy. Thank you, my dear. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Lade.